Hi there everybody, Chase Raz from the Zillica Observer and today we're going to be looking at Zill Graph and why you should be using it when you're making some of your Zill Swap trades. So let's head over to ZillGraph.io and take a look. All right, so when you're on Zill Graph, one of the first things that really jumps out at you and is quite striking is that Zill Swap itself is embedded on the left-hand side of this page, and that is sort of indicative of what this tool is designed to do. But before we we get there, let's talk about who it's designed by. It's designed by Julian Sarcher. We've talked about Julian before. We've we've taken a look at his GitHub repository. We've talked about Julian and some of the zip proposals that have gone through. Um, with with Gizo governance. We've seen him over on Twitter in previous videos. So Julian has created Zillgraph and back to that purpose, this is to help you make more informed decisions and more informed trades on Zillswap. Specifically, we want to use the token rate or the price in Zills essentially, which we can see right here. By default, by the way, XSGD is loaded. You can change that token. We'll walk through that in just a moment. But what's also shown here is the volume, the transaction volume. And that's really helpful if you're creating trades, if you're making trades and you wanna see what some of the market activities are. It's also helpful if you just want a status of health for ZillSwap itself. Maybe you're providing into a pool and you wanna see the volume of transactions being made in a visual way, right? You want that volumetric data. This is a great way to get it. So at the very top, you can see they're tracking 14 tokens. It gives us the 24 hour volume. This is total across all of ZillSwap. Right now, one of the big milestones when I'm recording here in early March, 2021, is we're hitting 50 million per day. And then we have information about GZIL, of course, as the governance token. I do find this site a little bit peculiar in the way that I think it has more control, dashboard controls that are actually useful. I'm I'm curious to, to know how Julian made it because when you look up here at the volume, you see this last one day, that one day is by default. There's I, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I can't figure it out. But if I were to remove, use customize time range, if I were to remove that, we get something else. I'm not exactly sure what it is I'm looking here at here, but when we add it back in, it, there's nothing you can really do unless there's some interface I'm missing. When you add it back in, it goes to the one year. It's still showing that larger. OK, so now I know what it is. That one year volume. I've never found a way to get back to the one day like I don't see it in the interface here. So I'm not 100 percent sure, but I, that may be on me. Julian, reach out to me. Let me know um, what I'm doing wrong or if that's just the way it's supposed to be. But don't let all that distract you. Right. Because what we're here for is ZillSwap and we're here for this trading information. So let's say you're not into XSGD. It's as simple as coming down and selecting what you are into. Maybe we want to take a look at swap or port or whatever else. So we change the token and we can also change the time frame of what we want to see. Do I want to see the last hour only? We'll take a look at that pretty stable over the last hour. Or do we want to take a look at the last 24 hours, the last 30 days? You, you get where this is going. I'm going to I'm going to hone in here at about 30 days. 30 days for Zwap has been fairly interesting. But again, one of the key advantages here and why you might want this in real time as you're making decisions isn't just the price. Right? We can go to ZillSwap and we can, you know, on ZillSwap itself, it tells you how many. Uh, of one thing you're going to get if you trade another. So for instance, I'm connected to my wallet here. If I say I want to swap and I'm going to swap Zill and just whatever's in this wallet, what happens to be in there? If I'm going to swap Zill for a, a Red Sea, I don't know, because everybody picks on me for picking port all the time because I like it. So if if we're going to swap for Red Sea, right, you, you get the numbers here of what the conversion is, how many uh, Red Sea each Zill is worth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera visualizing that information here. Uh, Zillgraph isn't the only place to do it, but they were the first. And visualizing that information is amazingly valuable. But then when you add in this correlating factor of what are the transactions that are going on, look at these spikes in transactions. What's the correlation to price movement when those happen? Right? Those are the types of questions you want to start asking yourself. And yes, you can you can pick on me, but port is going to be one of the better examples of this right now because I'm monitoring it in real time. 
you can see what I mean when I, I say, well, we pull it up over here in Zill Swamp, or if we're only looking at Zill Swamp, and we see the information about how much it's worth. But you and I, as human beings, we tend to be visual in nature when that sense is enabled, right? When we're sighted, when we see, we tend to be visual in nature to some degree. If not, right, maybe a better way to put it is that word I used before, volumetric. We are volumetric, right? We understand things in shapes and contours and spikes and valleys and all of those types of concepts around 3D space. So while we're not looking at 3D directly, when we put the price and we put the the, the token volume in a 2D chart, take a look at what happens. This is what I mean. Here's, here's the visual. I'm going to switch over to one of my favorites, the port. Look at that transaction spike here at the end. That gives us context to why the price is going up, right? There are times we can correlate transaction volume. There are times sometimes we can't, but mostly we have some correlations and spikes and in behavior of what's happening. So these two pieces of information are really what we're here for to help us make more informed real-time decisions about our trades, to try to time them, to try to make sure we know what we're getting into, that it's not this idea of, you know, you go to um, you go to ZillSwap, and next thing you know, there's a great interface and a beautiful DEX that does exactly what every other DEX does, and maybe then some uh, with some of the plans coming in the future. But it's really hard to understand what you're getting yourself into. I guess I should connect my uh, my wallet here. OK, so that's connected. It's really hard to figure out what it, what you're getting yourself into when, you know, you're just going to say, yeah, my wallet's not working on this. I'd have to reset. I'm, I'm not going to go through all that. But again, just saying it numerically isn't quite enough. So for those of you who have heard about Zillgraph over and over and over and wonder why is everybody talking about it? What am I using it for? One, it gets us the pricing information for a particular token over time in Zill. It also gets us the volume. So the transaction volume. In addition to that, we can look down and we can see the liquidity distribution across all of ZillSwap. So if you want to know where people are putting their money in terms of pooling and Zill Swap, here it is. And take a look at these colors. I mean, it's GZIL right here. It's Zwap and it's XSGD. Now, these proportions have changed drastically since Zwap has been introduced. I mean, drastically. Zwap is, as you look at this, it's it's 40 something percent, it looks like, of all of liquidity on Zill Swap. So when you start thinking about, well, we were at 10 million, then we're at 50 million. Now we're, you know, what it like, I think 75 million or something like that. When we look at those values of where is it coming from right now, a lot of it, not most, not a majority, but a lot, almost half comes from Zwap, people putting Zwap and Zill into that particular pool. We can also see some of the specific volumes. So we're getting a nice at a glance, overview, visual information in both a, a, a ring chart and in a table of the liquidity provisioning across all of ZillSwap. And then for an individual token pair, we're getting that token rate and we're getting the token volume. And with this, we can start making some really good informed decisions rather than just looking at the DEX interface. As good as it is, it does what it does, but it's nice to have this other information as well. So that's an introduction to Zillgraph and why some people are using it. If you use it for something in addition, if you think I failed to cover something, put it down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Take care.